He obey not the word. And what that means is if maybe you're married to a man that, that doesn't know Christ, he's not obeying God's call to salvation. Or maybe at this point in his life, he's just not walking with God. But, but he's pointing these things out that if any of them are not obeying the word, they also, or your husbands, may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives or by the lifestyle, by the conduct of the wives. And what this verse is saying is that our husbands, they can be won and they can be influenced without a word, without us. You know, what I have a tendency to do as a wife is I like to try to convince Sam to think my way. And so what I'll do, I will use very elaborate explanations and they can get very long and, and I want him to get it, you know, or, or I'll try to use convincing arguments. You know, I can just say some things that really make a lot of sense. And if that doesn't work, I'll go to subtle hints. And that is disastrous usually just because you leave out so much. I mean, you'll leave out that and in, uh, the intent that Sam was talking about. You just speak in the criteria. But what? What God's telling us is that our husbands, no matter where they're walking in life, whether they're godly men or whether they're just not walking with God at that point, they can be influenced by observing us. And it doesn't take, it's not by what we say, it's by how we live. And in this particular verse, he's saying that one of the major ways to influence or to impact our husbands is through submission. It's by having an attitude of submission. So he's saying to be submissive to your husbands. Now, in order to make a difference in their lives, to really be that rock of help that empowers them and enables them, we better understand what this word means. And it's, it's a confusing word to us in our culture. Um, it comes from, in the Greek, it's the word hupotasso. And this means to submit. It's actually a military term, and it means to come under the hearing of out of devotion, to come under the hearing of out of devotion. Now, it gets confused sometimes with another Greek word, and this is the word hupakuo. And the word hupakuo means to obey or to come out of the hearing, to come under the hearing of out of duty. And, and the difference here is is um, children are to obey. It is their duty to obey their parents. But for a wife, um, it is our honor. We, we are devoted. We come and we submit to our husbands out of devotion. Do you see this difference in attitude? It's, it's a devoted attitude instead of an attitude out of duty. And so what this tells me is that as ladies, we might comply with every single thing that our husband requests, but if we're doing it out of duty instead of out of devotion, we're not really submitting. So we have to understand some of the intricacies of the word to submit. And I want to also emphasize that submission has absolutely nothing to do with inferiority. Because a lot of times we get this connotation especially because it said to come be, under, be in subjection. And, and that is King James English, remember. But um, we get this feeling that it means we're inferior, that w submission is an inferior, but it's not. Because if you look on down at verse 7, 1 Peter 3, verse 7, when Peter starts directing his attention to husbands, and he instructs husbands to honor their wives, and he says, as the weaker vessel, and he's saying the physically weaker vessel. Um, you know, like we went over in the last session, we said men, they have a, a larger frame most of the time than women. They have more muscle mass. So physically, they are the stronger uh, of the sexes. But we're the weaker vessel, but men are to give us honor. And you don't give honor to someone that's inferior. So this has nothing to do with inferiority. As a matter of fact, in Galatians 3.28, it explains that male and female are on the same spiritual plane, if, if you'll look that up. But, so this has nothing to do with inferiority, but what, it's a difference in roles. God has assigned man or assigned 
husbands the task of protector and provider. And he made his body, like we said, physically bigger so that he could fulfill that task. So they're to be the protector and the provider. And um, let me say too, they did not merit this position. They didn't earn it. It was assigned to them by God. And he just assigned us a different role. We, we have a different job. And ours is the, um, the job of completing the husband, of helping, of enabling, of empowering the husband so that he can fulfill the role that God has given him. And I'll remind you, I think it was beautiful. It was precious the first night, last night, when Sam talked about how God uses that same word helper to describe himself. You know, God is our help. And, and I want to remind you of that. Whenever you think of submission, you think that we're here to enable. We're here to empower. And, and how important a function that is in our role. Um, but it has nothing to do with inferiority. Now, I want to give you an example. And I don't know if any of y'all are into football, but I always like to use the example of Peyton Manning. And he did retire um, a few years ago, maybe three years ago, he was probably one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. And um, he was known to be the most intelligent football mind that there was. He just thought it. He knew all the intricacies of the game. And um, Peyton Manning, now this is ridiculous, he made $39 million. That was his contract, $39 million to be a football player. And anyway, so... Peyton Manning, he um, actually, he was known, he had a, a bigger football, a more intelligent football mind than the coach. He um, made a lot more money than the coach. And everyone knew he, who he was because he did these dorky commercials with his brother, you know, all the time. They had all these commercials on TV. So he was more well-known than the coach. I mean, I can't even tell you the coach's name. But Peyton Manning submitted to the authority of the coach for the good of the team. And, and what that means is um, the coach, he, he talked over the game plan with the coach. And, and they determined the coach was the one that determined the game plan. He made the final decisions. But Peyton, he gave Peyton the authority. If Peyton got out there on the field and the um, if the defense changed their plans, Peyton recognized it because he's so smart. The, the coach had given him the authority to adjust the play accordingly. So he made his decisions. He did what was best for the team, but he stuck with the game plan overall. That submission, he submitted to the authority of the coach for the good of the team. Even though he might have made more money, he may have been more intelligent and more well-known, he still submitted to the coach for the, for the good of the whole team. And that's, that's what submission is, particularly the non-military use of the word hupotasso. Um, non-military use of this word hupotasso means it's a voluntary, and I like that, voluntary attitude of giving in, of cooperating, of assuming responsibility and carrying a burden. And, and, and that's who we are as women. That's what God has designed us to do. So submission is voluntary allegiance or loyalty. But you know, knowing all of these things, and, and God has given me the privilege of teaching this for you know a number of years, even though I've teach it, even though I've studied it, it's still one of the hardest things I've ever, ever had to do because what you're doing, when you submit to another human being, you're voluntarily, I'm voluntarily making myself vulnerable to the mistakes of another person. And unfortunately, our husbands, they're going to make mistakes. I mean, it's, they're, they're just like us. They're not perfect. So we're voluntarily making ourselves vulnerable to their mistakes, and that can be really it can be difficult, but you know what? Our God understood this, and he's got a reason. He's perfect. He's complete. Even if our husbands aren't perfect, God is, and he's got a plan in all this in, in assigning us this role, but he knows it's difficult, and I feel like that's why he's got that first word in there in, in the verse where it says, likewise, ye wives, 
be in subjection to your own husbands. And what that likewise means is I get how difficult this is, but I have just given you some examples to help you better understand my plan for submission. That's what that word likewise means. So what I want to do is just take a minute and shift backwards to where the likewise is. Mm -hmm. 